Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. I'm going to give you some news on Paul Pogba. Then I'm going to talk with you a bit more about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So we'll start with the news on Pogba anyway. So Paul Pogba's agent held talks with Juventus in Milan last week. And I think there's a good chance Paul Pogba will go back to Juventus if he leaves Manchester United in the summer transfer window. Paul Pogba endured four very good years with Juventus before he rejoined Manchester United. He has had a long-running transfer saga. You know, there's been narratives of him going back to Juventus. He's been relentlessly linked to the move to Real Madrid and PSG have also been in for him. I reckon we'd get from between 60 to 70 million if we sell Pogba in the summer transfer window. Now, Paul Pogba obviously started against Leicester. He was quiet in that game, but Paul Pogba obviously obviously played a part in Mason Greenwood's goal. Paul Pogba came on against Milan and obviously scored the goal and made an instant impact. Paul Pogba has just recently come back from a thigh injury. Um, he had an ankle injury earlier on this season and he was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury. But Paul Pogba is an imperative player because he brings creativity to the team. And I think Paul Pogba's much better on that left wing because that's where he's more effective. So I'm saying the exact same thing as what Paul Skull said not so long ago. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has recently come out and said that he's hopeful that Paul Pogba will stay at Man United and sign a new contract. Solskjaer has said that Man United are in talks with Paul Popper over a new contract, but we have not yet made a formal contract offer. Earlier on this season, Solskjaer suggested Popper could sign a new contract because he said he's happy at the club. Minio Riola, he's desperate to get his client out of the football club. Earlier on this season, Minio Riola said he's got no intentions of destabilising his client's season at Man United and he made an admission saying that he's working quietly on Paul Popper's transfer to avoid offence. Because Minio Riola doesn't have a good relationship with Man United and he has been criticised a lot. He made the announcement back in December regarding Paul Popper and Solskjaer was furious with Minio Riola's announcement. Earlier on this season, we triggered that one-year extension on his contract, so he's under contract on Man United until June 2022. Matthias Pogba, Paul Pogba's brother, he came out earlier on this season and advised us to sell Paul Pogba in the summer because he said there's a good chance that I'll leave for free next year and he said he's got no intentions of signing a new contract. Pogba's our most expensive signing at the moment because we paid £89 million for him. And this is his fifth season at the football club since he rejoined. But I would like Paul Popper to stay at the club potentially past the summer. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out. This is a debate. Now, I think the vast majority of Manchester United fans want Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out. We won't sack him at this present time because obviously at the moment there is no one available to replace him. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has one more chance. The Europa League is the only chance of us winning any silverware this season because we're no longer in the FA Cup. 
So if we fail to win the Europa League this season, I think there's a good chance that Solskjaer will be sat at the end of this season. Uh, Danny Murphy also believes this. Solskjaer needs to win a trophy because that marks progress. Gary Neville said the exact same thing not so long ago. We haven't won a trophy since 2017 and that's nowhere near good enough to our standards. A club of our stature needs to be winning trophies. Solskjaer doesn't have a long-term future at Manchester United. He's obviously agreed to sign a new contract worth £9 million a year. So obviously he's been given a pay rise. Sources at Old Trafford said the other week, talks are set to begin any day on the new deal because later on this month, Ole enters the final year of his three-year contract. But obviously it doesn't mean he's going to see out this contract, you know, obviously when he does sign it. But I've got to be honest if in regards to Solskjaer, he's not good enough as Manchester United manager. You know, this is his second full season at the football club. I've already told you my concerns about him. We adore Solskjaer because he is a club legend and he was a great player for the football club for 11 years. He flourished under Sir Alex Ferguson's guidance. He has gained some managerial experience reflecting now on his being at the club, but he hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager. And I just think Ole is in a position that he shouldn't be in, basically. Because Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Manchester United it was going to be a massive job, despite him knowing the club through thick and thin. I think we've got to get a manager in with a proven pedigree and a manager who's got that big club arrogance and certainly Ole Gunnar Solskjaer hasn't got it. I think the club made a mistake by giving him the job permanently. But the main explanation we give him the job permanently was reflecting on what he did in that three-month period when he was the interim manager because... He won 14 games out of 19 in all competitions, so the club decided to give him the job permanently in March 2019. But I think a lot of mistakes have been made for the last, what, eight years, and that's why we haven't been as consistent as we'd like to have been. When we have been inconsistent, though, not all of the blame has stemmed from Solskjaer. It's never all the manager's fault. And I've got to give him credit in quite a few aspects. You know, we are second in the Premier League. At one point, he got us top of the Premier League. That's when we was in the title race. But there was a period where we dropped so many points. So that's why we're no longer in the title race now. You know, we've enjoyed good periods under him where we have seen consistency and where he has got the best out of the team in some of them good periods. And... He's improved certain players. And I like the way he has promoted the youth. You know, he got us to the FA Cup quarter-final. He's got us to the Europa League quarter-final. He did well last season in his first full season. Guided us to three semi-finals. Got us qualification for the Champions League. And got us a third-place finish. Went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions last season. Was 14 unbeaten in the Premier League. And yeah, Ole has made some good signings as Man United manager. He spent almost £300 million. And so far he's enjoyed four transfer windows as permanent Man United manager. And he's got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended in.
our board has been one of the biggest issues at the club for a while. Obviously, because the managers that we've had since Ferguson haven't got the players they wanted to recommend in. We've also overpaid for players. And in general, our recruitment has just been very, very poor. Hopefully, that will all change in the summer. Because this year's summer transfer window is massive for Manchester United. And I think Solskjaer should get the backing he deserves. Because obviously we've got John Murtaughin as our director of football. And I said we needed a director of football. Because I said that's one of the structural changes that we need at the club. John Murtaugh knows the club inside out. Darren Fletcher, he's a technical director. He's endured, he endured, sorry, two decades at Manchester United as a player. So he knows the club through thick and thin. Woodward did a statement not so long ago and he says the progress by Solskjaer and the players this season is clear. So in that aspect, Woodward is backing him. But Woodward has come out several times to show his support for Ollie, and even enjoying them bad periods, he assured that Solskjaer's job was safe. Our board have got a soft stance on Ollie, with him being a club legend. I think with Ollie being a club legend, that's what's kept him in the Man United job. Disregarding being a club legend, I don't think he'd have been Manchester United manager now, because we have endured very bad periods under Ollie, where you can turn around and say, yeah, he was lucky not to be sacked. But I've probably got to say he is the best manager since Ferguson. Our transfer budget has been revealed for the summer. It's £80 million. That's nowhere near enough for the players we want to recommend in. Solskjaer's planning to sell some players in the summer, so that will bolster our transfer budget it hopes to raise as much as £60 million so that would take our transfer budget to £140 million you can identify the weaknesses in the squad and the areas we're looking to strengthen up is we're looking to get a striker in we're looking to get a right winner in we're looking to get a holding midfielder in we're looking to get a centre half in I think we're also looking to get a right back in to provide competition for Anwan Basaka. But we've been linked with quite a lot of players. Now obviously you know the news on Pedro Neto from Wolves. Now Man United are eyeing a 50 million plus move for Pedro Neto. We are seeing him as an alternative to Jadon Sancho. Back in 2016, Pedro Neto had a trial at Carrington as a teenager, but obviously didn't impress enough, so Man United didn't get him. His performances for Wolves have been outstanding. Wolves paid £18 million for him from Lazio. Before he was at Lazio, Lazio he was at Braga. He's under contract with Wolves until 2025. And he's a right winner, and he's only young. He's 21 years of age. Erling Haaland, I'd certainly take him at Manchester United. Now, recent narratives said that Erling Haaland favours a move to Real Madrid, so in that aspect we've been handed an Erling Haaland transfer below. Uh, Haaland recently scored twice in Dortmund's 2-2 draw with Cologne. He stormed off the pitch in that game. He's been subjected to a lot of transfer speculation though as Haaland. There's been so many clubs in for him. Oli said earlier on this season that he's keeping in touch with Haaland and he's following Erling Haaland's progress. And back in December 2019, Solskjaer and Woodward went to Norway to meet up with Erling Haaland to negotiate a possible move to Manchester United. Solskjaer knows the player well. Solskjaer was the one that gave him his debut at just the age of 16 at Mulder. 
Dortmund are demanding in the excess of £100 million. He has a release clause but doesn't become active until next year. Haaland has been at Dortmund over a year now. Uh, Dortmund paid just £17 million for him and he's under contract until 2024. Declan Rice, I'd certainly take him at Manchester United. There was narratives coming out not so long ago saying that Solskjaer had agreed with John Murtoff and Darren Fletcher that Declan Rice would be the perfect signing for the club. Apparently West Ham are demanding £80 million. It says earlier on this season there was considering lowering their asking price to £50 million. So if we're willing to pay £80 million, that will convince West Ham to offload him. He was relentlessly linked to a move to Chelsea last year was Declan Rice. Uh, that's when Frank Lampard was in charge and Frank Lampard was infuriated when he missed out on Declan Rice. Because he was his top target. The main explanations I take Rice at Man United is because he's young, he's got a lot of development in him. You know, he breaks up the play well, he gets forward well, he's well Premier League proven. He's been at West Ham seven years now. He's under contract at West Ham until 2024. Before he was at West Ham, he was at Chelsea. He was in their youth set up for several years. I'd certainly take Raphael Varane at Man United, but I don't see us getting him. I'd take Jules Conde from Sevilla because we've also been linked with him. So, in the summer chance for Winder, I'm expecting us to make around three or four signings. We're going to sell players in the summer transfer window. Uh, I think there's a good chance that we'll sell Eric Bay in the summer transfer window. Now, it came out prior to Leicester game saying that Eric Bay is furious with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Because he doesn't feel respected or wanted by him. And apparently he says Bay is going to reject the contract offer. Uh, Bay's come out and said that we only want to get him a new contract so obviously we can receive a bigger transfer fee. You know, Bay's actually lost his place in the team and I've been impressed with Bay in the games he's been involved in this season. I prefer him to Lindelof, definitely. Bay's got like 15 months left on his current contract. The only element of concern about him is injury prone so in that aspect he is a liability. We got Eric Bay back in 2016 from Villarreal. We paid £30 million for him. David De Gea. Uh, there's a good chance we'll sell him in the summer transfer window so we can make Dean Henderson our first choice goalkeeper. Dean Henderson has now started six games in a row for Man United and I've been impressed with Henderson um, in the games he's been involved in this season. Dean Henderson's still young, he's got a lot of development in him and he's now reliable enough to become our number one goalkeeper because he has got that experience behind him and plus he endured two successful loans with Sheffield United. We sell the hair in the summer. I reckon we'll get around £50 million. There was narratives coming out the other week saying that we are willing to listen to offers for the hair. You know, this is the hair's 10th season at Manchester United, so he has been a long servant at the club. And... I reckon he's had around seven and a half, eight good years because in the last couple of years he's been a liability reflecting on the calamitous mistakes he's made. But De Gea has won everything domestically at the football club. He's made over 500 appearances for us in all competitions. And earlier on this season, Oli warned De Gea that his number one jersey is under threat. 
Phil Jones, I want him to leave this year. Surprised he didn't leave in January, but Solskjaer said he's going to be given a second chance. Jones doesn't get in the team and he's been out of injury for over a year. Jones is only the outfield player that's still here from the Sir Alex Ferguson era. This is his 10th season at Manchester United, so he's been a long servant. Donny van der Beek. Now there's a good chance we'll sell him in the summer. Uh, Mark Hughes has come out and spoke about van der Beek. He said he looks lost at Manchester United. Obviously started in the Cup against Leicester recently. Played a part in the goal, Van der Beek, but prior to that, very, very quiet. Now, apparently, Donny van der Beek feels loved at Manchester United, despite his lack of game time. There was narratives coming out not so long ago saying that Donny van der Beek has threatened to quit Man United after one season due to his lack of game time and he's set to hold showdown talks with Ed Woodward over his future. Uh, ESPN said back in January that we rejected several loan offers for Van der Beek because we was reluctant to let him go. Earlier on this season Oli made an admission saying that Van der Beek was unhappy at the club because of his lack of game time but he promised him more game time at Man United. He's just come back from injury though not so long ago. You know, we got Van der Beek in a deal worth £40 million. Man United paid £35 million up front and there was £5 million in add-ons. Van der Beek's got a contract with the club until 2025. And he's versatile because he can play in three different roles. Yeah, Paul Pobber could still leave in the summer. I think there's a good chance we'll sell Matic in the summer as well because he isn't one of our first choice midfielders and Matic is too inconsistent. I've always had my strong reservations about him because he's always been a slow player as Nemanja Matic. And he's ageing up. Matic has been at the club almost four years. We got Matic in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. Anthony Martial, a lot of United fans are saying we need to sell him in the summer because he isn't good enough to represent the club. Martial's not clinical enough in front of goal. The chances have been there for him this season, but he hasn't converted them. He's just come back from a hip injury not so long ago and he had an injury before that. Earlier on this season, Solskjaer said he was impressed with Anthony Martial's work rate and he backed him to rediscover his form. Martial was good though last season and he was good in his debut season under Louis van Gaal. Martial has been at the club over five years. I think it was last season Solskjaer gave him that number nine shirt. Edison Cavani could leave in the summer. He may stay, though, potentially past the summer. Now, Solskjaer is hopeful that Cavani will stay at Man United for next season and Oli's revealed that we have been in contract discussions with Edison Cavani. There's obviously talks of him going to Boca Juniors, isn't there? A football Insider recently said that Cavani reached a verbal agreement to join Boca Juniors at the end of the season. Cavani's current contract expires in June. So we let him go in the summer, transfer window, we won't receive a transfer fee. Solskjaer said though earlier on this season that Cavani was closer to Boca Juniors than staying at Man United and reports were stemming from Argentina saying that Cavani wants to leave after one season and go to Boca Juniors. Edison Cavani's father's come out and said, that Edison Cavani is unhappy at the club and he doesn't feel comfortable in England. Cavani's been injured. He's just come back recently from injury. But he has made a fantastic impact since he's come in. And one matter, you know, I think there's a good chance he'll go in the summer. But we'll be looking to get rid of Lingard permanently and Delore permanently. So imagine if we sell all them players, we'll generate a substantial amount 
and that will help us with our rebuilding process. Our two best players by far this season have been Luke Shaw and Bruno Fernandes. Luke Shaw has been the player of the season by far. He's been the best left back in the Premier League this season. Uh, Man United is set to offer him a new contract to bring him closer to the club's top earners. But in the last eight years, Man United have been playing catch-up. And like I said, we've made mistakes. That's why we haven't been as consistent as we'd like to have been. No one is going to replicate what Ferguson did at the club and no one is going to last as long as Ferguson did at the club and we've got to accept that in that aspect. But we just want to be back, you know, winning trophies and that. Nothing has changed at all in the last eight years. You know, obviously when Ferguson retired, we brought Moyes in. Moyes came in because Ferguson recommended him in. Didn't work out under Moyes. Moyes is the worst manager we've ever had. We finished seventh under Moyes. That's the lowest we've finished in the Premier League era. He endured ten months. Louis van Gaal, we brought him in. It was a good start under Louis van Gaal and then it all went downhill. We won the FA Cup under van Gaal. And then Jose Mourinho brought him in after van Gaal. Had one good season under him because he won three trophies in his first season and got a second in his first season. And then in his second season, he was terrible. And the reasons it didn't work out under Mourinho <coughs> is because he had bad disputes with the board, bad disputes with the top players. And in general, the board just worked back in the signings that I wanted to recommend in. And now, obviously, we've got Solskjaer appointed him in in December 2018. And, you know, we're not even really known as a sacking football club. We've brought around 30-odd players in since Ferguson retired and we spent over £1 billion you know, under Moyes, we brought Fellaini and Matter in. They were the only two we brought in under under David Moyes. Uh, we must have brought a good 15, 16 players in under Louis van Gaal. A lot of the players van Gaal brought in are no longer here now. And Mourinho, he brought 11 players into the club. And Solskjaer's got rid of some of Mourinho's players. But Solskjaer's in, still inheriting some players from other managerial eras. Our brand of football is atrocious. It really, really is. It just seems to be boring football in quite a lot of games under Ole. Um, under Mourinho, our football was poor. I hated the way Mourinho approached the big games as Man United manager because he used to park the bus and the football under Louis van Gaal was absolutely turgid. You very, very seldom see Man United play expansive football. I probably reckon that we've had five or six good games this season where we've won and put a good performance out. You know, it was a good performance away at Man City, beat them 2-0. It was a good performance at home to Leeds, 1-6-2. Good performance at home to Southampton, 1-9-0. Uh, good performance away at Real Sociedad, 1-4-0. So is that, what, four games I've said to you? PSG away, that's another one, 2-1. That's the only ones I can really think of. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you for today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.